What is wrong with today's pacifism? We are living in a day where we have many leaders in the body of Christ who are known for their fierce stance for pacifism. Every other tweet, every other Facebook update is a sharp outcry against the military, national violence, global violence, weapons, and war. These Christian leaders, rightly I might add, expose nationalism as an idol, something I did in spades in my book Insurgents Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom. But I also took dead aim at globalism, which is also an idol for many Christians. Regrettably, most of the advocates of pacifism today don't recognize that. But there's a problem, a big one. Let me use an illustration to bring it into bold relief. Anson Bench, this is a fictitious name, is someone who has a large Twitter following. Every day, Anson rips into politicians who degrade, demean, embarrass, and insult other public figures. Anson's Twitter followers love and relish his daily diatribes against these politicians who level insults at others. Now Anson is also a Little League coach, and so are several of his friends. Interestingly, Anson and his fellow coaches regularly degrade, demean, embarrass, and insult the players they're coaching whenever they make a mistake on the ball field. Now you may be thinking that Anson is a hypocrite, perhaps. But the larger issue is that Anson is passionate about condemning abusive behavior in a sphere that he will probably never influence, national and international politics, when he himself is acting abusively toward people he actually knows. Think about that. He's passionate about condemning abusive behavior on the national, international level when he himself acts abusively on the local, personal level. Now that's my opening illustration and I have a point to make. What is the problem of pacifism today? The problem is that countless pacifists will constantly decry the evils of war, the military, national and international violence, while at the same time acting violently on their social media feeds and blogs when people disagree with their viewpoints. Such people do not know the spirit of the Lamb the one who did not retaliate when attacked, who did not hurl insults when insulted, and who didn't defend himself when misunderstood and maligned. For a footnote, you can find that in 1 Peter chapter 2. Yet numerous pacifists today will return fire upon those who criticize them, they'll retaliate against those who attack them, and they'll defend themselves without blinking. Such people are not really pacifists, despite the rhetoric. God hates violence, but he hates it in all forms and all arenas, not just in the arena of national policy. Consequently, turning the other cheek doesn't just apply when someone is sticking a gun in your face, which has never happened to most pacifists. It more often applies when someone criticizes or attacks you or disagrees with you online. And therein lies the rub. In this regard, I wish every Christian leader who tweets a stream of consciousness against the ills of national violence would begin using their social media influence to explain what it means to bear the spirit of the Lamb, to lose, to bear the cross, and to lay one's life down, on the ground, and in one's social media engagements, not just in the far-off arena of national and international politics. I'm going to say one more word to the leaders of Christian pacifism today. And I'm not going to mention their names, but there are about five of them that are constantly writing against war and violence and nationalism on their Twitter feeds and Facebook updates. But I have a word for you. You can bemoan the military all day long, but that's not going to remove the military. You can bemoan the evils of war all day long, but that's not going to remove war. But you can do something right now about your followers treating other believers on blogs and social media with grace and forbearance and with and in the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. That's the great need today and that's where pacifism hits home. Those of us who have joined the insurgents stand for peace at all times, with all people and in all places. Selective pacifism is no pacifism at all. 
Now, I'm recording this monologue in November of 2018. I wrote an article on my blog, frankviola.org, earlier this year, which contains the same content as what you just heard. What is the problem of pacifism today? I wrote it months ago, and to date, not one pacifist leader, not one, has taken my challenge, nor have they tweeted the blog post. Now, that can be for one of two reasons. Number one, they never saw the blog post, which means none of their followers sent it to them. And I say sent to them because many of the followers of these pacifist leaders read my blog. So that's number one. Number two, they were sent the article. They did read it, but they chose not to respond to the challenge. And if that's the case, dear sisters and brothers, we have not so learned Jesus Christ. I hope that this video now on YouTube will change that. Be good.